Hello everyone, I am Matt and I'm going to show you a breakdown of a recent patch I posted that was a glitch patch for violin. In this patch I have all the cables that I'm going to fully expose and you'll see why I hide my cables in my videos because it just looks very messy without them. Um, so one of my goals is to show you what I was doing with the glitch, especially in Simpliciter, and also show you the power of the octave and pitch input on the playback with Simpliciter so you can see how to use that and get some ideas for your own use. So um, let me walk you through kind of the functionality of what my patch was doing and see if that helps you get some ideas um, and understanding what was happening. So um, let me start here. And what I've done is I have the patch kind of broken down and I've added a few different things to help, um, help it make sense. For instance, I've put a few um, oscillators up here that I'm gonna use to start off. Um, and I put some multimeters and some scopes up so that you can watch what's happening as I start to patch this Simpliciter um, with one cable at a, a time. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to patch the Verispeed. And as you can see right now, um, it's alternating between plus and minus 5 volts, and I have it centered at 0. So as this goes, this is going to go from forward 1x speed to backwards 1x speed as the um, play happens. And that is coming through this VCA here and going backwards. I have the ADDR sequencer. My patch, I had it so... I had a five sequence, five step sequence playing it. I wanted three steps to go forward, two steps to go backwards, and that's where you have plus five, plus five, plus five, minus five, minus five, just to kind of get it an unequal feeling. Um, I didn't want it to be balanced. Um, and the second um, Simpliciter, um, had a mirror image to that and was going opposite. So um, this mixer here made sure the second simpliciter was always going in the reverse direction to it. So when I patch this in here, the first thing that you're, uh, actually before we start that, let me show you what the um, dry signal is gonna sound like. That's just our generic dry test tone that we have there from energy and FM op and stereo and there's a little bit of movement to it. And you can see it goes backwards and forwards. And I'll explain how we get the glitches down here on the second one, which is the final product. Now, the second step that we're going to do is we're going to take the octave trigger level offset, and I'm going to patch that in to here. Um, notice this knob here is zeroed out. You can um, twist this in and out here a little bit um, to get um, the attenuverter reacting to different octaves, but um, I'm going to go ahead and patch this in right now. And what this is doing is this is coming through. Um, I'm going to go in backwards order, the quantizer, and ignore this for now. Um, this is going through super sample and hold, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, and going back to white noise. So this is a chance-based octave jumping, and right now I have it on the fifth, but for now let me jump down and have it on the root of the chord just so you can hear what's happening. <laughs> And 
And as you can hear it, it's jumping around and hitting different octaves on a random sequence. Um, and the play speed will always be synced up to an octave because I have it quantized here. And this is a really cool thing about the Simpliciter is a playback speed is synced up to the um, octave input with the volt per octave input that a normal oscillator has. So if you feed it a constant tone, it will respond and play back a constant volt per octave um, return. If you feed it more complicated things like a melody or chords, um, you have to be careful of what happens with that. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So um, I'm going to start adding some notes here and you'll see what happens. <laughs> So we have octave and fifth now. We can do a major chord, we can do a minor chord. Over here you can see the oscillator that's showing the results. Green is the playback from Simpliciter. And purple is, I just have a palm loop op oscillator tracking the root um, fundamental tone showing the bass octave that it is without any of the harmonics there. So it's really easy for us to track. Now, um, one of the things, there are three controls that are really important to track the range of this um, octave or tonal jumps that we have. Um, and I think it's really good. Let me do three steps in a row here. And we're going to look at the probability, we're going to look at the level, and we're going to look at the offset here um, and compare that to what's happening to the scope. So the first one is a tr probability. And this is every time the trigger happens, which is coming off of the clocked module. Um, right now, 100% of the time, it's going to trigger and give me a new note um, but I can turn that down and like 50% of the time it gives me a new note or more or less based off the probability um, and so when you have two oscillators going you can pick and choose maybe one of them you want to have longer notes held on average and another one moving a lot faster so let me show you what that looks like when I change a probability <laughs> So it still might change fast occasionally, but it's going to have some slower notes in there. And I'm turning off the drone now. We don't need that there. Now the level, the input level changes the range that it's selecting these notes from. Let me put the offset as kind of neutral there, and I'll talk about that in a second. The higher the level is, the bigger the range. So if you want to have a huge octave jump, put the level really high. If you want to keep it a tight range, have it locked down really low. If the level's really extreme, you'll have some bass notes likely that are too low to hear and some treble notes that are too high to hear. The offset is going to change our bass range from too low. high so you know if you want to have your range in there we can kind of dial it in with these two knobs here you can get a nice bass voice right there
my choice on this oscillator was to put it on the fifth. Kind of with medium probability, if I'm remembering correctly. With a medium level of offset. Um, you can always change it as you're performing it to change the tonality of that. So you have a lot of options there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go on to the next step on the tutorial where I'm going to, rather than just using the drone that I've kind of pre-recorded, I'm going to go ahead and add in active new clips into the Simpliciter. And so to do that, we're going to need to take a recording trigger and we're going to need to actively sample some sound. So this sampled sound is coming off of the clock. And if you look, I have a divided to division of the clock. So it's a little bit slower than what was coming off of the earlier click. So um, a slower clock works really well for this. And we're going to put this onto the recording trigger, which is right here. I have sound on sound turned off. I have the pre sound turned off the line off. And the mix here doesn't really matter. Um, let me show you what this sounds like. So what happens is every time this clicks, you'll see the recording turns on and off and a new clip is loaded. Now, since we have a drone playing, um, it's not going to affect it too much, but I'll switch it to the um, violin loop that I had earlier and you'll hear a, a big difference. <laughs> There's the violin loop you can hear. The forward and backwards play that's being recorded and sampled. Generally, when you're doing um, melodic sampling, I find that fourths, fifths, and the tonic works really well. It gets a little bit complicated if you start putting too many intervals in that could get dissonant, unless that's a sound that you're wanting to go for. And again, we can play around with our probability, our level, and our offset. Now you might notice that there's some clicking that's happening on this and that's one of the big questions that people ask is how do we get rid of the clicks on this? Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. There's one more thing we're going to do before we get to that. But to have it jump around like this, where it chooses random notes, we want to turn on the grid. And what this does is it turns on peak detection mode automatically. And we want it to randomly go to the next grid. And uh, we, you can pick and choose these different um, settings here.
randomly makes it advance to the next clip automatically. If you have it turned off, it'll just sit and loop on one of them. Um, but let me turn this off so I can focus here. Um, the grid activation mode finds peaks and automatically slices it up based off of um, algorithms that you can choose in some of the menus that I'll show you in a second. Um, and you can choose different peak detection modes and you can see sometimes I'm getting two slices, sometimes I'm getting 10 or more. The random makes it automatically jump back and forth. So if you want to have a nice continuous jumping around playing at the different speeds based off of the octave input, you can choose to automatically jump to the next level. Um, if you want to have it just stay on one and just repeat it over and over again, and you can see um, when it gets one of the smaller clips, <clears throat> have the random off, and especially as the level gets higher, you can see it just kind of stays in one and loops. <laughs> So there's a lot of different ways that we can tune those glitches on that to your goals. Now, to get rid of the clicks, one of the easiest ways is this clip knob here. Turn it up there. That's the easiest way. You can right click, there are two menus here. You can right click over the white part here. Go down to fade in and out modes and there's fade in and out make sure those are selected here you also will see some modes in if you click over the um actual sound waves that are slightly different menus here now I do want to mention here over this sound menu, you have the sound wave and you can go peak detect and you can change the threshold of where the peaks are being detected, which will change the number of slices you're getting. You can change the distance that the peaks are apart. So if you want to have lots of really close slices together um, you can change the distance of the peaks and you can play around with those their ping pong mode makes them go back and forth and there are some different ways to get um, your grains and your slices to line up differently still might get occasional clicks in there, but you can try to do some of the different fade and fade out modes and work on the click there. I also find that um, bringing a rhythm to a grain pattern or a glitch pattern makes it lock up and, and feel a little less chaotic, so we can try that. speed there and that is just simply because we have the very speed control here it's really easy to change a playback through VCA now the final thing is that I want to point out let me mute the second one here I run my Simplicitors through resonators or distortions and usually different ones if I have multiple ones going because Without them. I find they get really bright 
Let me show you what I mean. There's no resonator there. I feel that just darkens a little bit. Let me show you what the distortion one sounds like here. Just it's a soft distortion just to warm it up a little bit. different tones on the different voices just to help set them apart. So you can go through and experiment, you know, and see. Hopefully that gives you some ideas just on the background of the patch. Let me zoom out here so you can see what's happening. Happy patching, hopefully that helps, and I'll be doing a few more patch breakdowns here of some of my other stuff that I have going on. Thank you. 